Hello, my friends. Today we are talk about. Today we are going to talk about Yeshu statics. Under this chapter, we have some topics to cover. Uh, so we are going to talk about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is the most fundamental topics to learn under this topic. Under this chapter, then we are going to step into the concept of electric field. Afterwards, we are going to learn Gauss law. Gauss law is the main main topics of this chapter, and we are going to devolve more terms into it. And then afterwards, we will take a look on. Another concepts, another concept like electric potentials and capacitance. So let's start with Coulomb laws. Coulomb's law. Suppose we have two objects; they are charged. The object on the left is. Charged to Q one. This means the object on the left carry charge Q one, and the object on the right is a carrier of another charge Q two. Now um, the distance between them is d. So what is Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law. By Coulomb's law, the interaction force between them is given by Q one, Q two for pi epsilon, and then d square. So here, what is epsilon? Epsilon. Is the permittivity. Every material has its own permittivity. Even vacuum has its own permittivity. Air has its own permittivity. The permittivity for air is given by a point a five four. And how about metals? Metal also has its own permittivity. Normally, the permittivity for metal is less than one, less than zero. So this formula is a scalar formula. Scalar in the sense that it only tells the magnitude. It doesn't query informations about the directions. So, what we need to do is to convert this formula into scalar form, sorry, into vector form. In many situations, we need the formula to be presented in vector form. Ah,、uh, say, if we use, we we try to apply. Vector calculus, like Maxwell equation, we need to use the vector forms of this formula to do the analysis. So, the first thing that you can do is to put the arrow、uh, and the letter F. So this represents a vector pointing to. The f direction, and its magnitude is f. On the right side of the equation, you have q one, q two, four pi, and then epsilon. Unfortunately, none of these variables 
can be converted into wood vectors. The only thing that you can convert into vector is this variable d. So to convert the distance into a vector, you need to convert this into a displacement, displacement vector. The displacement vector has its own magnitude, represented as d, and then a uh, magnitude of d. Uh, and this magnitude of d is just equals to d. Now, what we can do is convert this d square into this one. The right size of the equation is a scalar. The left side is a vector. We have to make sure both sides of the equation are in vector forms. So in order to convert the right side of the equation into, ve into a vector form, we can do this, d hat. d hat means a unit vector. pointing to the direction of D. The problem is, uh, apparently, you have two variables, D hat and uh, the vector D. So it's not going to be very convenient. Actually, it's not that. D hat just means a vector D divided by its own magnitude. Oh, sorry, I have to write it down in some other space. So. In this, say, in this case, we can convert the formula into this form. These expressions will end you up with d hat. The vector d divided by its own magnitude is is this uh, unit vector. In this case, you can further simplify the formula. You have magnitude square and then the magnitude. Then you can combine them together. And then so this is the formula. The column law in vector form.